All right, we are going to go ahead and get started. As some of you know, my name is Caitlin. I'm the content marketing manager here at Sparkhire. And I just wanted to thank you all for joining us this afternoon. For those of you who don't know, Sparkhire is a video interviewing platform that helps you make better hires faster. So we're currently working with over 3,000 unique organizations around the world. So I wanted to welcome you all to our growth recruiting webinar series. For those of you that don't know, our growth recruiting series is all about helping you recruit the best people for your company or organization through repeatable strategies that scale. So we're going to be partnering with some really cool companies once a month to help you come up with some new strategies and maybe refine some processes that you already have in place today. Should you have any questions along the way, please feel free to ask them in our chat box. It is on the right hand side of your screen. Um, we will make sure to answer them all during the Q&A portion of the webinar. So today we're joined by Rob Long. He is the Vice President of Product Marketing at Workable. So thank you so much for joining us today, Rob. Thanks, Caitlin. Thanks for having me. Really pleased to, to join the, the series. I've seen some of the other webinars and they're fantastic. So it's great to be here to talk about a topic that is close to my heart and a topic that's helped hundreds or thousands of companies improve their hiring already as well. So without any further ado, um, wanted to give a quick outline of what we're gonna talk about in the webinar today. Um, so we're gonna start really with the core of this, like what is structured recruiting? Make sure we're all on the same page and then really look at the difference that structural re recruiting makes. I think the fact that people have joined us for the webinar, I think people have seen that there is a benefit to this, or you're at least experiencing some pain from some unstructured hiring. So we'll go into a bit of that, um, see how you can get your companies and colleagues on board with introducing a structured hiring process. And then we'll really dig into what that means. So how do you lay the foundation of a structured hiring process? And then how do you build that strategy out? And we want to give you one example actually from Workable, one of our teams, of how we've put structured recruiting into action into our customer support team. And then as we get towards the end, we want to close the loop. And this comes to actually making sure that this is a repeatable process and how you can use data and metrics to see the impact that it's having and continually improving your hiring process. Finally, we've got a really exciting announcement to make uh, towards the end. And we've got a little video to show you as well. And then we'll wrap it up with the Q&A. So if you've got any questions like Caitlin mentions, please feel free to add them into the general chat box. And we'll be sure to answer all of those before we finish the webinar. So what is structured recruiting? What does it really mean? Well, essentially, it's putting a process in place around the planning and selection and offer stages of your hiring process. But really importantly, it's purpose-driven. It's not process for process's sake. It's things about thinking about what skills are missing from your organization, crafting job descriptions that actually address that gap, and interviewing candidates based on the must-have skills and qualities that you need to fill those gaps. As we've mentioned, really importantly, this is repeatable. This isn't about reinventing the wheel every time you hire someone. Once you've got this process that's purpose-driven, you should be able to repeat this process for either a specific job or a specific department or your company as a whole. And by keeping each step repeatable, you make it predictable. And this is what's super important. Once you've hired for roles using this new process, you should be able to know things like how many candidates you need in your talent pool, how many candidates you need to attract for position, what questions and answers address the skills you're looking for. It's about actually making improvements to your hiring process, so you're continuously improving how well you're identifying the best candidates for your company and for your jobs. So what does it feel like for people who don't have a structured hiring process? And if you're looking at this slide and thinking, oh god, that's me, don't worry, you're not alone. Over 6,000 companies use Workable now, and one of the most common reasons they come to us is because this is how it feels like to them. That they don't have structure in their process and they know something's wrong. They know that they're not hiring the right people every time. They know that they're being really inefficient with their time. And they know they're not actually improving the way they hire in order to become more competitive. And changes that they make to process day in, day out, aren't really showing results. They're not improving their process. It feels a bit like Groundhog Day. And one really common theme with companies that are experiencing this pain is how they actually manage hiring. And it tends to be the old classics of they're using email and spreadsheets. I think everyone's probably at some point in their career been in this position. 
I know I have. I used to be a recruiter before I joined Workable. The, using email and spreadsheets and you get a resume in your inbox. It's competing for your attention with internal emails, sales emails, marketing emails, and they can very easily get lost or just filed away in an email folder to forget about it or deal with it a few days later, by which time another company with a much better process in place is already engaging with that candidates. And it really lacks any collaboration as well. You're there on your own, you've got an inbox from careers at company.com, and you're trying to manage that all in tools that were really designed for finance. Spreadsheets are great for many things like finance, but they're really no good as a tool to manage a collaborative and structured hiring process. So planning becomes almost impossible. You can't build an informed hiring strategy if you don't have the data or the insight or the previous experience of having structured process in place. And really importantly, the candidate experience can be really dreadful and it really fails to meet the expectations that candidates have now of really strong candidate experience with every company, that consumer level type of engagement that they accept, expect in a hiring process. It's fragmented, it's delayed, they wait for feedback, they're not sure where their application is in the process, and you're actually missing out on good people because it's taking too long, that it's that inefficient. So if this feels familiar, I say fear not, you're in the webinar that will hopefully help, and you're not alone. So how does this actually help them? How does structured recruiting help companies that are in that situation? Well, really there's so many, um, but to focus on a few that we see coming up again and again, really one of the most important things is that by using structured interviews and a structured process, you really focus on what matters for the job, especially good if you have inexperienced hiring managers. We've been through this ourselves. We're a high growth startup. Four years ago when I joined the company, we had people being promoted into team leadership positions and they needed help. They needed structure around hiring to make sure that they could assess the best people to bring into their teams. And also it helps mitigate the bias. By evaluating all candidates on a level playing field, you're knocking out that inconsistency that can come along with people who tend to just hire people that they like, rather than people that are actually great for the business. And by being able to track this, by having structure and process in place, you can start tracking this progress over time. You can start making informed forecasting decisions, budgeting becomes stronger, and really this is giving that credibility to HR and way more sway, the influence is bolstered when you're making requests to management. And importantly, this isn't just something for big companies. Companies of all different sizes use Workable, from growth startups through to regional airlines and everything in between. And they all have this in common. They need structure as the backbone of a good hiring process. And you'd be amazed actually how the size of some of the companies that come to us without that structure in place. But the good news is they can put this in place and see instant results. So hopefully we can help some of you guys with that as well. So we've spoken to thousands of companies who've implemented this and we've started to break it down into like a really simple three-step process. Like how do you go from no structure to structure? And the first thing that we tell people to do is really look at that basics, the hiring pipeline first. This is just organizing the process, the steps involved in getting someone a job from we've got some candidates to we've made an offer. And then you look at the bit in the middle, the actual interviews, those individual steps, and how do you assure that each step is actually adding value to the hiring decisions? How is it effectively assessing candidates so you make the best hiring decisions? And then the final step, this is closing the loop, this is the reporting and metrics. It's not just about giving ourselves a pat on the back and saying, look how much better we are now than we used to be, but that's important. It's good to celebrate these, these mini victories, but it's actually looking at how we can continuously improve that as well. So this isn't a linear process. This isn't you do it once and forget about it. You should always be thinking about how we can improve this process. There's always changes that you can make. So where should we get started? It's that step one. It's looking at the hiring pipeline. So this is the first, and I would say definitely the most important step to set the foundation of a structured hiring process. It's designing your pipeline. And it's the easiest way to create structure. And it's important to organize your candidates by stage so you can get that helicopter view as well. You need to be able to update hiring managers or update senior management or just know yourself where you're at with hiring. Do you have enough candidates in order to make a hire? Are you progressing them through to the interview stage fast enough? And the important thing with this is, and I say this to everyone I speak to, keep it simple to start with. If this is your first attempt at putting this type of process in place, keep it simple. 
maybe even as simple as the top pipeline here, as simple as some candidates have applied, we're gonna do an initial screening that could be a phone screen, it could be a video interview, then we're gonna have an interview and then we're gonna to move to offer and hired. You can always develop this as you start to identify what's working best for you. And maybe then you'll move something towards the second pipeline that we can see here at the bottom, where there is slightly more of a nuanced phone screen, HR interview, hiring manager meeting, and then final interview. But if ever it becomes blurry, if ever you think, I'm not sure we do this step, take it out, keep it simple first, and then start developing it to add extra stages in. One thing you might find, if you're hiring for very different roles in your companies, so if you're a healthcare company and you might be hiring registered nurses, but at the same time be hiring a receptionist or a marketing manager or a salesperson, consider whether there's different pipelines for those different positions. Again, if it's your first try, keep it simple and maybe one generic pipeline for all those roles is okay. But if you really need different pipelines to assess candidates properly, maybe you need to identify a pipeline per department or per role type, but keep it simple and make sure there's visibility. You really need visibility of these pipeline stages to keep that effective. And there's various ways to do that. For some people, it's their applicant tracking system. This should be the page one of applicant tracking system manual is that it should give you this. So if you're not using a tool to do it at the moment, consider investing in a tool so that it gives you that visibility and transparency. By having transparency, everyone in the company knows where they're at. The HR team, the talent team, senior management, and even individual hiring managers can get a very quick helicopter view of where you stand with hiring. So once you have that in place, you really then need to start looking at the individual stages. And this is really about then building the strategy around interviewing. And why? Well, there's been many research papers done, and we've cited one here, that structured interviews are almost twice as effective as a common unstructured interview. But what does effective really mean? Well, it means they're twice as effective at predicting job performance than unstructured interviews. So the questions you're choosing actually more accurately reflect the behaviors needed on the job. And the candidate's responses to those questions will be a better indicator of how they perform once they're in the role. And this is a huge step change. To do one thing and get twice as effective results, this is a no brainer. So this is where we then talk about step two. So how do you do this? foundation for this is really understanding the requirements for the role and this is the must-have requirements and a very easy trap and a trap a lot of companies fall into is actually creating a very 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 long list of requirements for a role and it starts to look like a Frankenstein's monster of a job that really if you looked at those requirements there's no single person who could actually fulfill all of those requirements so when you're building these really take a look at each one and say would I really disqualify a candidate for this alone if you wouldn't, then it's probably not a must have requirement. Keep it to a side and consider it a nice to have, but start by getting that core of must have. And I think this is where that relationship between HR or talent and the hiring managers becomes really important. There has to be alignment at this stage as to what those must have requirements are. If you start deviating here and there's a difference in opinion, you can be sure that once you get to the final stages, there's gonna be disagreements about who's gonna be right for the role and you might have to go back to square one. So this can seem like a bit of a time suck. Like this does take longer to prepare for than an unstructured interview. There's no doubt about that. But if you get it one, right once and you get it right at the beginning, you really boost your chances of making the right hire this time and for every future position as well. Really importantly, step two is developing interview questions that evaluate those must-haves. So you've got to start with those must-haves and then understand which questions evaluate those. Why this is important? Well, it's important because you've got to compare apples to apples. You've got to make sure that each candidate is going through the same criteria, same assessment, so that when you get to that offer stage, you can actually evaluate and compare like for like. The worst situation I've been in with, with hiring, and it used to have, I, I've seen this happen a number of times, you get to the end of a hiring process and you'd have different opinions on who should be the right person to be hired. And what you would find often is that actually those candidates haven't been through the same process. They've been asked different questions during interviews and you actually then can't make that decision. You have to go back to those candidates to fill the gaps. And this can really slow down the interview process, which isn't just bad for companies and their time to hire. It's not a great experience for the candidate either. So this is super important. The final stage is to take those must have requirements and take those questions and have a rating scale to assess the answers. And this is where you're looking at creating an interview kit. 
This is where you can actually then objectively assess each candidate and evaluate them together at the end of the process. So one thing that we recommend people look at is our resources site. I think sometimes the hardest part of hiring, whether it's writing a description or starting with these must-haves or writing the questions, is looking at a blank page. Those first, that first question, that first line of a job description can be so tough. So we've got over 400 templates from job description, interview questions that you can download on the resources site, and it can just give you that jolt you need to get started. So I highly recommend you check that out. And then think about our cheat sheet as well. This is something that we implemented about 18 months ago, and I know that many companies that I speak to use this now. This is our cheat sheet for great interview questions and a well-rounded interview. So what we do is we take those interview questions that we've created based on the must-have requirements and put them into this matrix. And this covers the different types of interview questions you're probably familiar with. So behavioral interview questions or situational ones, and ones that are role specific to general. We map our interview questions to each of these parts of the grid and make sure that there's no big holes. Where there's gaps, we know that we need to go back, create some more interview questions to make sure it's a well-rounded interview. Um, I'm pretty sure that you'll actually have access to this ebook in the follow-up email. This is a great step. This is something that people can start doing differently tomorrow that we know makes a big impact. Um, just to make sure that you've got all the questions covered and you're actually making well-rounded hiring decisions. Final step of step two is the scorecard. This is where you take the must-have requirements and those questions and put them into a scorecard. This is where all of that work starts to pay off because the scorecard is that objective measurement of a candidate's interview performance. And it really helps interviewers stay focused. They know that at this stage of the process, these are the questions they're meant to be focusing on and this is what they're trying to assess. So you can actually create these scorecards for each stage of the interview process. You know then that when you get to making the final decision, you've got all the information you need from each candidate. And this is actually really nice for the candidate as well. Like one of the worst experiences for a candidate if they've met three different people at a company, is to be asked the same questions over and over again. It seems like it's wasting their time. By having scorecards in place for each stage, you remove that. You make sure that the right person, whether that's the hiring manager or HR or a peer of this role, is asking the questions they're best placed to assess. The collaboration piece here is key as well. By keeping this structured, you're actually able to get together and if you have a debrief at the end of an interview process to make a decision, these are the single sources of truth for the interview process that you use to make your decisions. If you're doing high volume hiring, what we've seen work really well, particularly perhaps around the phone screen stage, is video interviews. So we actually use Spark Car ourselves at this stage, and it tends to work for a few reasons. The first is we take away some of the administrative burden from our recruiter on that high volume stage of the interview process, which is the phone screens, the scheduling, the calls. And actually, we found that we get more insights on candidates in less time using video interviews than using a phone screen. We can actually interview remote candidates without having to fly them to the office. And what our hiring managers love is that they can actually view those recorded interviews for reference later in the process. They're really good data points. So consider building that into the process as well. So I've said that these are great things to do, um, but let me tell you a bit about a time when we've implemented this in one of our teams. So Workable, like I mentioned, is, is a five-year-old company. I've been lucky to be here um, since almost the start. When we were a small company, we had one person in support in our European office. We've now got support teams in Boston in the US, in Europe, in Australia, and we cover every time zone. The team's grown extremely fast. In the last year alone, it's quadrupled in size. And this wouldn't have been possible had we not had a structured process in place. So our VP operations, who manages this team, went through exactly this process. He started by looking at what are the must-have requirements? What are those specific traits that make a great support person at Workable? And he identified three. They had to be methodical. They had to be good problem solvers and had to enjoy helping others. So he designed his hiring pipeline to actually assess those qualities and looked at the different assignments through the process and the interviews to assess those qualities. And what he found actually was that he was relying more on our written assignments than he was on a candidate's resume as a predictor of future performance. So that came in earlier in the process. And actually what he was able to do by doing this was cut out growing pains. So we didn't experience the growing pains of quadrupling a team. In fact, 
they thrived during this growth period and they actually cut their median response time to just 18 minutes whilst growing this, this fast. And that simply wouldn't have been possible if he hadn't been using a structured hiring process. So this isn't just something we preach, this is something we put into practice and use ourselves and have seen the results, which is why we're so passionate about putting this information in other people's hands as well. And we've seen those results. And we've seen those results anecdotally, but also by looking at the reporting and metrics. And this is closing the loop. This is where we can say, how is this actually impacting our goals? Different companies have different key metrics for hiring, but some of the most common are the ones here. So time to hire. How long are you going from having a skills gap in your company to filling it and having someone qualified and making an impact? The next one, quality of qualified candidates. How many candidates do we actually need to attract to know that we're gonna make a hire? How do we know that if we've got a set number of candidates, we're most likely to make a hire and not have to go back to square one and actually spoil that time to hire? And then finally, how much effort do we have to put in? How many interviews do we have to do? How many hours of interviewing time are we gonna expect from our hiring managers? Time that we can now block out in their diary at a known point in time so that there's slots available for interviews. And again, this is all around increasing that efficiency and increasing that experience that candidates have. So this isn't just about us, this is about the candidates as well and giving them a great experience throughout the whole process. And so with these reports and metrics, you need to know these. That continual improvement comes from looking at the metrics that you should be able to get from a system like an applicant tracking system. And if you're not looking at that data, you really don't know if implementing this process has worked or whether your process is repeatable or not. So benchmarking can be a great way just to make sure you're on track. And there's online benchmarking tools that you can use to do this, but also benchmark against yourself. Different companies have different requirements, have different types of roles to fill. You are a unique company, but you can get some benchmarking information online so you can get a bit of an indicator of where you sit in your industry or in your geography. And this is all because recruiting isn't linear. This isn't something we just do once. We do it over and over again and we learn. So we go from creating that hiring pipeline, that's step one. Then we look at the interview process. Then we look at the reporting. We then can improve our forecasting and planning, but it all can then go back into improving that process. We can then go from say having one company pipeline to narrowing it down to actually having a pipeline per department. But it's a constant learning circle. And why? Because we want to win every time. Every time we want to hire someone, we want to know that we're hiring the best available candidate for that role so that we're constantly getting better results. That we've got easier planning for budgets, interviews and open positions. That we're becoming more efficient. We're wasting fewer resources and we're saving costs. And we want to be able to take that information to management to make business cases, whatever it might be that we need, whether that's something such as video interviewing or different assessments throughout the process. Having the data enables us to have those conversations based on what's actually happening in the real world. So to recap really quickly, what's the goal? The goal is to win every time. The goal is to have a process that makes sure the candidates have a great experience and we're hiring the best person for that role each time. And it starts with a pipeline, creating that repeatable framework. Following on from that, the interview process. Do we have a structured process that makes sure we're getting the information we need to make the right decisions, giving the candidates a great experience and actually comparing apples to apples to remove that inherent bias there is in hiring. And then finally, are we using a reporting and metrics to show that this is predictable, to show that we can do this over and over again and improve it and actually use that data and insight to bolster our influence within the company for decisions that are being made uh, on the basis of it. So that data really is there for that continuous improvement. I mentioned at the beginning that we had an exciting announcement to make, and I'm really pleased to be the one that gets to share this with everyone, that actually, this is great news for us. We use Workable, of course. We use Spark Hire as well, and we've just released our partnership, which integrates Workable and Spark Hire seamlessly. And I'm gonna show you a really quick video of what that actually means and how we're using it now as well. Introducing the SparkHire and Workable integration, which lets you create, review, and share SparkHire video interviews directly from your Workable account. Let's take a quick tour. Once you activate the integration in Workable, you'll add a video interview stage to your recruiting process. This enables you to invite candidates to a video interview when they make it to this step. Let's go to a job with a candidate and move them to the video interview stage. 
From here, I can select the set of interview questions I want this candidate to answer and clicking send video interview will email the candidate their interview invitation. When the candidate completes the interview, I can access it from their timeline in Workable and with one click, watch it in SparkHire or copy the link to share it with the hiring manager. Simple and streamlined. That's how hiring should be. Start using video interviews from your Workable account today. Learn more on SparkHire.com. So I'm super excited about that. I know our talent acquisition manager here and also in Europe is super excited about it as well. So I hope a few of you get to use that as well. Um, and as we promised, we would be going to a live Q&A. Um, so I think we've had a few questions that have come in already. Caitlin, how are we looking on the questions? Yeah, so we've had quite a few questions come in. Um, the first one being, what is a good way to know if the interview questions you're coming up with are going to help you fill the skills gap? So it's a really good question. I think a lot of this comes back to how you work with the hiring managers. I think it's that alignment early in the process and making sure that if you have a HR team or a talent team that's leading recruitment, that they've sat down with the hiring managers to agree upon those questions. And I think more than that as well, is agreeing on what a great answer is. Like we mentioned putting a rating scale in place, but what's the difference between a great answer, an okay answer, and a poor answer? And I think if there's alignment there, that's the, that's the foundation. One more thing, I think in terms of like a pro tip, if you agree on that great answer, and actually the hiring manager says, well, if I heard that great answer, I don't think it would actually make me more inclined to hire that person. What you've probably identified is that this isn't a must have skill. If a candidate's able to give you a great answer and it still isn't increasing their chances, I think you then have to go back a step almost and look at, is this a must have skill? So that I think when you set up the process is the first way. I think then it comes back to the debrief at the end of a process or that continuous learning that if you're asking all the questions that you agreed were the best questions to ask and you're still having difficulty identifying a great person at the end of the process, I think that's when you know perhaps they aren't the best questions and you need to go back and look at those again with the hiring manager. I hope that's helpful. Yeah, that was a really great answer. Um, it looks like the next question that's come in, have you built or have you um, seen a successful recruiting stack and what did it look like? Um, so I can give you some insight onto our own and also a couple of others I've seen. So we obviously use Workable for our recruiting automation and applicant tracking. We use Spark Hire for video interviewing. Um, we actually created our own, each hiring manager creates their own assessments. Um, and then at the final end of that process, we use Bamboo HR for our HIS system. I think the important thing with people's tech stack for recruiting is that there's really a one size fits all approach. Um, I know that our tech stack works well for companies like us, but I know companies like us that maybe don't use Bamboo HR, but use Namely instead, or might have some candidate sourcing tools like Hired.com if they're hiring for particularly tough to find positions like perhaps developers. But I think the most important thing when people are looking at recruiting stacks and the technology that they use is there's one thing that should never be compromised on and it's ease of use. Hiring is a team sport, it's collaborative. The best hiring decisions are made when everyone who's a stakeholder is able to collaborate on it. And I think it can be very tempting sometimes to kind of get every feature under the sun in every single part of your process to have the biggest HRAS system you can get. But actually what tends to happen in those cases is you have very low engagement and those tools actually become a hindrance. So if there's one thing I'd say when you're considering your tech stack to have the sort of the number one priority on your checklist is, would our hiring managers use this? Would our HR team use this day to day? I think that's the best place to start. Absolutely. I know we think about the same things when creating at least my marketing stack here at Spark Hire. So that's a great insight. Um, another question that came in, um, somebody wanted to know more about your job board connections. So we have direct integrations with, uh, I think it's over 180 job boards now. Um, so that's from sort of the major players like LinkedIn, Career Builder, Monster, Glassdoor, through to niche job boards, whether that's niche based on industry or niche based on a geography. So we have customers in over 80 countries. And so there's specific job boards, for example, Seek um, for Australia as well. So we've built them out continuously 
um, since the company was founded to basically address the needs of our customers. Because we do believe as a company that the hardest part of hiring is finding great talent. Structure and process is the backbone to good hiring, but without being able to fill your pipeline with the best talents, you really can't go anywhere from there. And that's why we have invested so much in those integrations. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the next question, um, for a beginner, looking at hiring data can be quite intimidating. Um, so what do you suggest we should pay the closest attention to when first starting out? Great question. I think I think some of it as well, I mentioned this around just starting this process, is keep it simple at first. Like really look at the metrics that matter to you and to your business. Um, there are some common ones that tend to come up, time to hire and time to fill are probably the most commonly tracked metrics. And I think if you're looking for how you can check the effectiveness of a structured hiring process, that's one that you want to measure. And there's, there is various ways you can measure that. The most simple is saying that from when I create a job, how long does it take before I make an offer? Um, if you want to get a little bit more in depth, you can start to look at how long it actually takes you to get a candidate through the process. So when someone applies, how efficient are you at getting them from application through to offer? They're slightly different metrics. And I'd say that's probably where most people start. People also then tend to want to look at cost per hire. And rightly so. People want to know that they're getting bang for their buck when they're spending on whether it's job boards or if it's recruiting software or if it's agencies. Um, but again, there's different ways of tracking that. Do you include salaries of your recruiters or HR team in that cost? And I think there, again, keep it simple to start with. There is a danger that sometimes people let data and reporting slow them down. And I think that that's one reason why people come to companies like Workable, because we just build that for them. It's real-time data and reporting without having to lift a finger. And so I would say first, focus on getting that structure and process in place look at some basic metrics and build up to start looking at some of those more sort of in the in the weeds uh, reports like funnel reporting or productivity reporting. Yeah, awesome. Um, so one other question, um, what are the main features of um, your recruitment software and do, are you able to customize them? Um, so we see work, well, I guess it's it's not just an applicant tracking system. I think the applicant tracking systems of old were just that. It was workflow and process tools. It's really tools that only did this part that we've looked at today. I think we see work was sort of like a next generation recruiting software, where actually we're looking at the whole process. It's looking at how can we actually help people find candidates, whether that's through the job board distribution network, if it's our candidate search engine, people search, if it's providing a great candidate experience through their careers page, right through to the point where they're making an offer. So when we see why people choose Workable, it's that sourcing capability. It's being able to attract active and passive candidates. It's the fact that it's easy to use. We have native iOS and Android apps that are really popular with hiring managers, and that high level of engagement is important too. And so it really is that whole process. It's not just workflow and process tool. It's everything you need to have a really efficient hiring process. And yes, um, big companies that use Workable, they come to us with an existing process sometimes. And they need to be able to configure Workable to actually match that process. And so one of the things that the customer was saying yesterday they liked about Workable was that we don't make them change the way they hire. They can configure and customize Workable to match their hiring process that they have in place. Very cool. Um, I think the last question we have, um, can you give us a good example of what a recruiting kit would look like? Sure. So I can tell you what our recruiting kit looks like, and these are ones um, so I hire here at Workable. Um, and the important things for me to get in that recruiting kit, it's everything I need to be able to prepare in sometimes a relatively time short period. So between one meeting and an interview, I need to be able to get that information take it in quickly and use it to have an effective interview. So for me, that means having the candidate's resume easily accessible. It means being able to see a copy of their application form with answers to screening questions easily. I like to see the candidate's communication with our talent acquisition manager as well, because I think it gives a bit of insight to how that person interacts with people. And also I want to see the feedback that my talent acquisition manager has given. She's a great recruiter. 
and I like to see what her thoughts were as well. So that for me is kind of the key ingredients for me for an interview kit. But I think more than that, I could get that in many ways. I could get printouts on my desk of that, but what I actually want to be able to do is see that on my mobile. Whilst I'm walking from one meter or another, I want all of that information in one place and easily digestible. And I think that's the difference between an average interview kit and a great one. It's actually ones that hiring managers can digest easily. Well, thanks Rob for answering all of those really great questions. Um, it was a pleasure having you with us today. My pleasure, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, of course. Um, so after this webinar, we will be sending you a follow-up email with a recording of today's webinar, so be on the lookout for that. You will also see a short survey pop up after the webinar. We would so greatly appreciate it if you could take the time to fill that out. It should only take you about 30 seconds. I promise it's very brief. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about Workable, head to workable.com. I know they have a free trial, so please make sure to take advantage of it if you're interested. As Rob mentioned previously, while you're on the website, make sure to check out their resources page. They have a ton of really great content that will help you build upon some of the things that Rob's talked to you about here today. Um, should you be interested in learning about SparkHire, feel free to respond to my follow-up email or head to sparkhire.com and you can schedule your own personal demo. If you're looking for some additional educational resources, make sure to check out the SparkHire blog at hr.sparkhire.com or the resources page on our website. So thanks again, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.